Today we're going to be looking at this huge brick, um, sorry, I mean a GeForce 4090 graphics card from Inno3D. Just to give you an idea of the size of this thing, it's bigger than my head and that's saying something. Okay, let's have a look at the front of the box. It says, you know, 3D, brutal in nature. It's got a big robot in the middle. Looks like robot dog or something like that. It says X3OC. X3, I'm presuming, means it's got three fans. OC means it's overclocked. It doesn't mention on the box anywhere by how much it is overclocked, if it is. But I found on the website it is, but it's that little that you probably not even notice the difference. To be honest with you, the boot clock on a standard 4090 is 2.52 gigahertz on this one it's 2.55 so very small difference and the base clock is 2.23 gigahertz where the base clock on this one is 2.235 megahertz or gigahertz should we say the back of the box isn't really interesting, it tells you the model number, which is obviously the GeForce RTX 1490, it's in O3D, it's got multiple different languages and a bit of information about this is a graphics card and all the cutting edge blah 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 on there, as well as the system specification, it does require 2 gigabytes free disk space on there, you do need space for free slot card, I'm guessing it's going to be a little bit bigger than that, to be honest with you, you're going to need room for, and it tells you a 1000 watt system power supply required. Their website says 850, so take that with a pinch of salt. But personally, if you're having a high-end machine, let's just say you've got a top-end i9, so 12900K, plus one of these and lots of storage, I would aim more 20% over that, so 1200 watts to 1300 watts, just in case. Okay, so let's have a look what's inside the box. Obviously, you've got the graphics card. We'll have a closer about look at that in a minute. You've got the anti-static bag it came in. You've also got this, which tells you how to install it, as well as about the cable there. And you've also got software installation, which basically you download the drivers from nvidia.com. It doesn't come with any, no CD, anything. Well, it is 2022, I suppose. Now, you've also got power supply guidelines. It says on here, they recommend that you use the power requirement of a 1000 watt power supply. Some things I've read say 850, but in all honesty, I'd go for a 12 to 1300 watt at least, just in case, especially if you're running something like an i9 processor, like the 12900K, which is power hungry, and then adding your SSDs and hard drives and any other bits you have, it's obviously going to use a lot of power because this thing works up to 450 watts. And the reason I know that is because of this cable. Now, if you're not sure what this cable is, you have to plug it into the top of the graphics card, and then you have to plug in three eight pin cables into here so that's the ones you'd normally put directly into the graphics card so you have to put those in don't use any other adapters like combining two six pins and molex and stuff make sure your graphic that your power supply has got three of those connections available and as they're saying a 1000 watt or higher now the reason why it says i know 450 each one of these connections can actually take up to 150 watts so 150 300 450 so as you can see 450 watts go into the actual graphics card now this concerns me a little bit because a lot of them i've been seeing actually come with four connections which makes me think that we're not going to be able to add any extra power into this which is going to limit any overclocking but then again would you really need to overclock or want to overclock something of this size and power usage? Again, 450 watts is going to make your power bill go up, especially if you're in the UK at the moment. Okay, let's have a look at the card. First of all, let's peel off this plastic. Oops. Okay, so let's get the elephant out of the room. This thing is absolutely huge, okay? So the standard 4090 is 304 millimeters long, which is long enough as it is. This one is 336 millimeters long. That's, that's huge, doesn't need to be that big. It's about three slots thick, as it says, but in all honesty, if you're gonna put another card or something underneath it, you're gonna be blocking the airflow. So ideally, you need four slots of room to get the air into it. So I wouldn't try and squeeze anything else there. You're gonna be blocking the airflow, and for something this beefy, using 450 watts of power, you don't wanna restrict the airflow at all. Now, to give you a comparison, 
This is an old GeForce 970, which a lot of people have still got. But look at the size difference between the two. It's like a whole extra fan just in the length. But look at the height as well. Huge. Okay, and again, this is only two slots thick instead of three. And you're thinking, okay, what about something a bit newer? A 3070. Again, it's a whole fan longer. That's huge. Height-wise, believe it or not, they are very similar. Thickness, again, only two slots. And you're thinking, oh, what about something a bit bigger? Okay, we've got here a 3080. And again, this is a big card. This is even bigger. So you've still got another, what, probably three or four centimeters on the end there lengthwise so you need to make sure you've got a case what can fit this thing because it's huge if you've got a micro atx case the chances it ain't going to fit in and even if you've got a standard size case you need to make sure it's going to fit especially if you've got water cooling on the front which could be blocking some of the roo up so that's absolutely crazy this card by a reminder was two and a half slots thick so it gives you a rough idea that this is even thicker but otherwise that's it for the size, but it is a really big card and it's heavy as hell. So let's have a close look at it then. So you've got these three fans. These fans are 98 millimeter each. Two of them will go clockwise, one will go anti-clockwise. And I've just noticed they've still got little peelies on. There you go. So that's what it'll look like. Now it looks like it's aluminium. It's not, it's plastic. This is plastic no aluminium to that at all all the aluminium is going to be in the heat sink as well as copper and so forth it gives you a rough idea so while these fans spin this way this one will obviously go the other way to help push the airflow so it's pretty good less turbulence and stuff like that which you see a lot of times now this thing's got a huge vapor chamber on the inside you can't really see it because of all the heat sinks and plastic around it and everything there's a huge vapor chamber in there which basically allows it to conduct more heat two times more than copper so it gives you a rough idea you can see the connection there for the power that's where you put that 12 pin connection in which you connect your three eight pin connections into but there is more ventilation here the Inno 3D does light up white. I don't think it's RGB and there is no other lighting on here at all. Now, heat sink design of this thing, okay? So there's nine heat pipes in here, okay? Which is 200, sorry, 2,716 millimeters long with a total surface area of over a million, a million, one million millimeters square. So there's hell of a lot of heat pipes in there, as well as heat sinks and so forth. This thing's got to cool down. And the way it works is obviously you've got a fan there, what blows air into it which will vent there and some on the back plate as well you've got another one there which vents a bit there as well as there and i'm guessing there's a few ventilation holes down the bottom this fan here will blow air through the graphics card which will then come out at the back in this area here so your fresh air is coming straight well not fresh air hot air is getting exhaled from the graphics card it's got a nice support brace there that is obviously metallic the rest of it though Oh, the back plate is metal, but the rest of it is plastic, just to give you a rough idea. Otherwise, that's pretty much it, to be honest. There isn't a lot here to see. This model doesn't seem to have any of the advanced features, like where you've got different BIOS settings or anything like that, what I can see, and no mention of it in the paperwork, unfortunately. So that means you're stuck with the standard speed setting. There isn't like a, a quiet or overclocked version or anything like that. Otherwise, you should be pretty good to go so you just got to insert this in your machine make sure you've got a high very high wattage power supply which has got three eight pin connections to collect to connect into that cable which goes in there one thing to bear in mind that cable what does go into there be careful apparently some People have been saying they're only rated for 30 uses and they're easy to break the contacts inside. So once you put it in the machine, you want to really leave it in there and not keep pulling it out, plugging it in. And also don't bend it too much. It might be a bit hard depending on the size of your case, but again, don't bend it. And I would highly recommend a support to support the weight of this thing. This thing is 
heavy. It's like having a brick inside your computer. In some cases, this could be heavier than a lot of computers on the market on its own. So here's the bit you've all been waiting for, is the actual scores, and you'll be able to see they are pretty good. Bear in mind, we're testing against a 3070, a 3080 Ti, and the reason why we're testing against those cards is because when you were able to buy them when they came out a year, year, two years ago, they came out at roughly the same price. Don't get me wrong, the proper retail price should have been a lot lower, but actual price where you had to buy it from the shop came out at the same price as the 4090s. The PC we're testing this on is an i9-12900K processor, 64 gig of RAM, 5200 MHz. It's an MSI Z690 motherboard, Lexar NM800, Gen 4 NVMe SSD. D. So right, so as you can see here, the 1490 score in Port Royal is 26,000. That is over double the score of the 3080 Ti. That's double. That's a huge difference. So in this test, we're testing Times by Extreme again, part of 3D Marks, and as you can see here, the score is drastically higher. So you can see 9,000 compared to 16,000. It's absolutely huge. It's 10,000 points more than the 3070. That's absolutely a huge score difference for a brand new card what's come out. I don't think we've seen jumps like this before in the past from a graphics card. Usually you're looking 10, 20% better. And in all honesty, a 3090 is only slightly faster than a 3080 Ti. And on this test, which is again 3D Mark, it's the Time Spy test, the standard one, we got 31,000. I have not seen a score that high before anywhere near that. I think that's similar to sort of the score you would get if you were to connect up three graphics cards together a few years ago in SLI. So that gives you a rough idea. So we're looking at huge scores, definitely on these synthetic tests anyway. Using 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra, we got 24,000. Again, that was well over double the 3080 Ti score of just under 12,000. So that's 24,000, nearly 25,000. That's a huge score. The 3070 is just looking at the other two and going, oh my my god i can't compete because it just can't if you look at the scores there's just a huge difference now we're getting on to actual proper games so cyberpunk 2077 is the first one running at 4k and you can see there that there's no comparison in the actual scores you're looking two nearly two and a half times faster from the 4090 compared to the 3080 bear in mind all tests we're doing are set on ultra high or high or whatever the highest preset setting is with ray tracing options turned on but as you can see here 129 for, uh, 129 frames per second compared to 51 there isn't really a comparison we did the same test in hd i'm not sure how many people are going to be gaming and using this on hd in all honesty but again instead of 87 frames per second you got 140. yeah it's one of those things obviously if you're spending one and a half two thousand pounds on a graphics card more than likely you're going to be gaming on a 4k screen and hopefully you will be because you're missing out on the trick because a lot of games will be limited to the speed of frames they can actually do due to your monitor and so forth especially at hd levels but on this next test far cry 5 and the reason we did 5 we wanted to show how it works on some older games so far cry 5 in 4 k you've got 202 frames per second and that's in 4k over 200 frames a second compared to 108 on the 3080 that's again i'm going to say it again it's a huge difference i'm going to say it's nearly double the score the 3070 well he's just looking up again as i was saying before if when you drop down to hd you start getting limited by other parts in your machine which is generally the cpu here we were getting 209 so only slightly more frames per second on hd than 4k the 3080 is close behind because again yeah we're limited with the cpu speed unfortunately but again maybe when the 13900 comes out comes out we'll uh, be able to test it again and probably get slightly better results but who knows so next is gta 5 old game running 4k gta 5 is actually locked in at 187 frames so you can't really go any faster than that but while it is locked in at a maximum of 187 frames per second when we're running in 4k 
the actual frame rate never dropped from 187. It was basically maximum frame rate it was possible, which is absolutely amazing. In HD, all of them run exactly the same at 187, again, because they are locked in for that frame rate, which is a shame that we can't get it to go a little bit higher um, to see what the full potential is, but unfortunately, they coded it into the game when they made it 187 frames per second is the maximum they'll let you play it at, which is a bit of a shame, I think, personally. Now, this game is Civilization VI Gathering Storm, and then we're checking the frame time. Now, bear in mind, this is lower the better so the quicker the frame time obviously the quicker it displays and so forth but as you can see here the 3070 got 11 frames or 11 frame time eight on the 3080 ti and the 4090 just five so that's pretty much half or even better than half than the 3070 so that's pretty good and again we're testing the turn time here not a huge difference because this is mainly cpu bound but it did make a little bit of difference so i thought it would be worth showing and as you can see 29 seconds on the 3070 the 3080 ti got 28 and the 4090 did get 26 we were rerun all these tests three times over and got the average just to let you know so it wasn't just a fluke on that one but again pretty good scores we get in here now one of my personal favorite games for doing testing is total war warhammer 3 and we're doing it in 4k again everything's ultra and blah blah we're all turned on and so forth but as you can see here 104 frames a second so we're getting over 100 frames per second on average on the 4090 compared to just 50 on the 3080 ti and a measly 35 on the 3070 so this card really brings high speed 4k gaming where the 3080 ti the 3090 did bring 4 4k to the mainstream but you were limited in a lot of games to 50 60 70 frames per second this is basically jumping it up well over that 100 frames a second for any reason you are playing the game in hd you are looking at 238 frames per second so that's huge speed on there that's over double the 3080 score and the 3070 can't even make 100 so it is really struggling though which is a shame, but it's, if you're playing on HD, it's, it's okay. But obviously 4K makes a huge difference. And the next game was City Skylines. We get a lot of people asking for this. It seems quite popular, even though it's an old game. To be honest, I think this is more CPU-bound, this game, than anything, because generally the scores uh, of the actual graphics cards you can see here are very close to each other there's only around about 10 12 percent between all the scores so a 3070 getting 86 frames a second the 3080 ti getting 88 and the 4090 getting 98 don't get me wrong it is better but there isn't a huge difference so down to overclocking, I only spent half an hour on this because we were limited in time. Unfortunately, we were given the card round about 10 days ago, which was really good, but we didn't have any drivers until launch day. So we weren't able to do a lot of testing on this, which is a bit of a pain. It was basically just sitting there as a brick for the last week. And I've been like going, mm, I want to play with this and I can't until today. So I did a little bit overclocking, half an hour. I managed to get the memory up to 2,910 megahertz, which is a nice improvement, but I would have liked to have been able to get it over that 3,000 with ease. Some of the other cards on the market do seem to be able to get it over that 3 gigahertz with no issues, mainly because they're not power locked like this card is. This card seems to be locked in at 450 watts. Again, it's only got those three connections going into it for power, which equals 450 watts. Again, you do get a bit off the board as well, but it's still it doesn't seem to go over that 450 watts but it does stay nice and cool the hottest temperature we've got inside a case and this is an i9 and everything so it is quite a hot case was 65 degrees celsius which is really really cool i think for what it is and that's when the fans were running at the most at 46 percent and i couldn't hear it over the rest of the fans in the case don't get me wrong on average i think the fans were running about 33 percent for doing most things and again, you can't hear them. So that's pretty good. So should you go out and buy one of these? Well, like anything in life, have you got the money for it and do you want it? It's not a need, it's a want. If you've got the money, you want the best performance, then go out and buy it. I'm not going to go and tell you, yes, it's too expensive or it's too cheap or anything like that. That's for you to decide, not me. So overall, I would highly recommend these cards. Now, actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to say hell yeah because of the performance increases over the previous generation.